it going? Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Scott McCutcheon. I am the founder of Sovereign Studios. Um, welcome to episode four of my Yamaha Virago project. Um, today we're going to be installing the forks. Um, so that should be real fun. Um, I thought this, when I first started this project, I thought this was going to be maybe one of the hardest parts of the project. Um, and if it wasn't for some great companies already out there, it may very well have been. Um, instead, uh, thanks to Cognito Moto and All Balls Racing, uh, they put these parts together, um, you know, specifically for this purpose that makes my job super fucking easy. Um, so, uh, let's go ahead and dive in and we'll, uh, start looking at how we do this. Cool. Um, yeah, so like I said, uh, Cognito Moto are the folks who, uh, helped me get this stem and uh you know obviously this uh this is the original Yamaha Virago uh triple tree and stem and you can see that um you know obviously they're not exactly the same length um and even if they were you know the the Virago uh the Virago forks obviously had a much smaller diameter. Um, so I've still got the Virago forks over here. And when I, uh, when I first saw these, you know, I'm pretty sure they're still good. Uh, the previous owner, when he disassembled this bike, it looks like he taped up the seals. Um, so at least there's that. It doesn't look like they leak, but obviously, you know, I, you know, I've never tested them. I've, I don't know their true condition. And I just wasn't comfortable putting these back on the bike anyway, at least not without testing them. Um, so, you know, I wasn't really sure. Most of this bike seems to have been in pretty good shape, so I'm pretty sure that those are still good. But we're not going to use them. So we're using the R6 stuff. So that's where this comes in. Um, but we didn't end up needing the fork here. That's the Virago fork. And then of course the R6 stem, which I still have, and I'm not going to take it out of this case, but the R6 stem, you know, as you can see, was significantly longer um, than this one. So, uh, so that was the trick there, is that we had to get this stem from Cognito Moto. Um, I saw another video where some guy had done this, and uh, what he did is he took his his uh, stock R6 stem. And cut out a chunk in the middle of it right and then he threaded the insides of the stem and put in another rod so he could reconnect the top and the bottom half um, and that way he was able to take out a good three inches of the the stock R6 stem or maybe not three inches but two inches of the stock R6 stem and use that one in place of the Cognito Moto stem but for me that was a lot of work um, so for, I don't know, two or, two or 250, I forget exactly, about 250 bucks. Um, I got this thing pressed into the R6 lower triple tree and um, got it good to go, you know? So this should make it real easy for us to just slide up on in there, all right? And do that thing. So we'll be able to use the R6 forks. Um, so that was real cool. Uh, the second bit, and arguably the most important bit uh, when doing this conversion is this deal right here the uh, all balls racing kit right so these are the uh, the bearing kits that actually allow those uh, forks you know to turn uh, properly or the triple trees to turn inside the stem so uh, all balls ma racing makes this conversion kit the part number is 9935155, right? You'll need two of them, one for the bottom and one for the top, uh, to do this conversion. And uh, basically what this does is it replaces the Yamaha Virago's bearings and the R6 bearings and turns them into a conversion bearing that works uh, with the R6 triple clamps um, and the Virago frame. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Cognito Moto was real nice, and, uh, there was the pricing, yeah, but, uh, Cognito Moto was real nice to, um, 
send me these directions and they um, you know real basic just show the layout of where the bearings go you know as we put everything together so should be real simple right and we'll slide it up on in there I uh I've already gone to all the trouble when I removed the stock Virago frame I've already popped out all the races and bearings um, so hopefully uh, we don't have to do a whole lot of work here now I don't have a bearing press myself so as far as getting the races back into the stem um, we're gonna have to just kinda do that real carefully with a hammer so the, this is the bearing kit as you can see pretty fancy um, already pre-lubed it looks like thanks um, yeah already pre-lubed but here's what we're gonna do get this guy in there all right so again you want to make sure that you're putting it in the right place obviously that curved area where the bearing sits needs to go in the right section right because on the the bottom the bearing is going to be sitting like this you know and on the top it'll be sitting like that um, so they kind of got to be flipped easy peasy right so we'll go ahead and pop this top race in there and you see it fits in real snugly and of course you don't want to put too much pressure on it with the hammer you know I feel like that looks pretty good a couple more taps just for good measure and I think that's that's good looks flush so race installed on the top let's go ahead and um, pop open the bottom race And again, these are the uh, same bearings for the top and the bottom, so don't worry about mixing them up. So the bottom race is going to be a little, a little tougher just because it's upside down, right? Um, oh. Looks like oh, yeah, totally. I don't know if uh, I don't know that you guys are able to see that. It's gonna be a little tougher to get that one in there. Um, okay, this is what I ended up doing. Is I just grabbed a. Um, you know, a small extension, and uh, I've been tapping it in real carefully. Uh, I still don't know if you can see in there, but um, you can see where it's not quite flush yet. So we're gonna do a couple more taps here on video, uh, so you can see kind of how I've been knocking it in there. Um, again, I mean it's metal, so you don't have to be like careful with it per se, but. Um, you know, it's not exactly hard metal, so you want to be still pretty careful with it to not bend it or anything like that. Alright, so that looks like we should be good. Um, again, here, hopefully that's a better view of that, um, of that race in there. So you want to make sure it sits flush. Um, 
All right, cool. So with the races installed, the rest should be real simple. Um, so, and again, we uh, we have these real nice directions from Cognito Moto um, to show us how to put this put this all back together. Um, I sort of feel like I should put the clamps onto the the forks before I go sliding it in there. Um, because I think it might make it easier. Probably will. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so on the Yamaha R6, this is the front, this is the rear. Um, so in this case, the forks, uh, or the triple clamps need to come in um, like this. So we'll go ahead and slide these back on. So as far as the bearings go, we do have to use one of these spacers at the bottom, um, but we have some option. We have optional spacers, and I feel like we have more than we really need. Um, but let's go ahead and for now we'll just try out the one, right? Um, we'll slide you on all the way down. Um, leave off the others for now uh, and then we have these seals here bearing seals um, and you want to make sure that you use the flat side uh, on the spacer and the leveraged side uh, you know for the bearing itself because this will be sitting here just like that inside that race um, so, just drop the seal on, just like that, and then we have the lower bearing, alright, so this guy goes here, um, well, I thought the lower bearing went there. Alright, so I'm still not really sure about this. Um, but I've decided we're going to use a second spacer, um, you know, just to be on the safe side as far as allowing this, uh, you know, making sure that this lower clamp doesn't rub on the frame. Um, oh, I see those are two different sizes. Look at that. They are two different sizes. Interesting. Um, let's use the two thick ones for now. Here's the seal again and the bearing, which still makes no sense to me why it won't slide down there all the way. So that's more or less how it should work. Once it's in, we'll drop the top bearing in, another seal, and then we'll get the top clamp on. Okay, uh, to get that in, we're going to have to lift this up a little bit. All right. So you went too high.
right so let's go ahead and pop on the top bearing get this guy in place Alright, we'll get the seal, and then the last two pieces we need are these spanners. Three pieces we need. Um, I really wish I had a true spanner wrench, but I don't, so this will have to do. There we go. Yeah, that's working. So it's bringing the bearing down the stem since I didn't have a press to put it on myself. Twisting this will help flush it. All right. And then last, we slide this uh, little washer itself there. Boom. Just like that. And then for the most part, there's your forks. All right, so that should be good. Let's go ahead and get the uh, top triple clamp back on. And we'll finalize it with the uh, steering nut itself. So top triple clamp um, kind of slides on like this. I don't think there's much else to it, right? Yeah. Booyah. Easily done. And the center nut just kind of slides on there. All right. Looking pretty good. I can dig it. I think uh, I think that's pretty fucking sharp, right there. Pretty fucking sharp. Um, should be real good. I don't think that this is gonna work. You know, as you can see, it's probably not long enough or short enough to actually sit in there. I'd probably have to raise these a little bit um, and extend this out to make this bump stop work. But I'm not gonna worry about that too much. Um, for the time being, um, yeah, this would kind of go something like this. We'll figure that out soon enough. Um, but yeah, otherwise, uh, I think we're in good shape here. So, not too shabby. Alright, uh, let's see. I still have the horn. I'm not sure if we're going to use this just yet. And this piece, I forgot exactly how all this kind of goes together. Um, clutch cable, throttle cable, stuff like that is all right here. Again, I'm not sure whether or not we're going to use all this stuff just yet. Well, I know for a fact we're going to end up using this and this. Um, we'll end up modifying these, these cables so that they work. Um, I'm not sure about the horn just yet. We probably will end up reusing it, um, which is totally fine. Um, but otherwise, otherwise, I think we're uh, good to go here.
All right, cool. Um, thanks for watching, checking out my uh, Yamaha Virago project. I feel like we got a uh, pretty good deal here going with the new forks on this guy. So um, hopefully, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, maybe check out my game, Ethereal Legends, on Steam. Um, and uh, hopefully you stay tuned for episode five. Uh, in the next episode, we'll go through and try and get the swing arm back together. So that should be real fun too. So have a good one. Happy New Year.